At age 58, Ronnie and Donnie Galleon are the world's oldest living conjoined twins. Ronnie and Donnie are truly a national, if not world, treasure. Despite being joined at the chest and sharing some major organs, the brothers have lived independently in their own home for two decades. But last year, a deadly virus nearly ended their lives. You feel like, did I fail them there by not finding out sooner that they had collapsed in the house? The twins recovered, but their brother Jim decided that they couldn't carry on living alone. Easy. This is the story of how Ronnie and Donnie find a new home. Goodbye, old house. Hello, new house. In a small house in the suburb of Dayton, Ohio, live two brothers. Ronnie and Donnie Galleon are the world's oldest conjoined twins. They've spent every second of every day for the last 58 years together. Oh, keepsake, keepsake. But that's down. Keepsake. Every day is a challenge. Every day is a new milestone. It's yet every day that they don't have complete freedom. They're Americans, they're free to live and go wherever they want, but they don't have individual freedom. Who's not a good looking person? That's my ID. We're here in the United States, we have two pictures. The twins have lived in the same house for the last 20 years, looking after themselves and each other. Their younger brother Jim and sister-in-law Mary call in every day to help out. I do it because I love them. I would not want to live in an institution. Therefore, I would want somebody to do it for me. All right, be good. <laughs> That's what you call America, a brotherly love. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ronnie and Donnie's condition is known as omphalo ischiopagus. In the womb, their bodies fuse together at the abdomen and pelvis. They start to share their bodies from the mid-large intestine down. They have one single organ that goes out through a single anal opening. They also have a partially shared bladder, and the bladder then empties into one single opening through one penis. I need you to step up real big. <clears throat> okay, step up. Remember, no sliding your feet. They do not ever get a moment of solace because every second literally of their life as a shared moment, good, bad, or indifferent. Ronnie and Donnie are always in each other's sight. A camera mounted on Ronnie's head reveals what the brothers see every day. One of the biggest problems the twins have had in recent years is a lack of mobility. But their lives were recently transformed by the donation of a $16,000 custom-made wheelchair. Wait, 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 what are you stuck on? Head down, Ronnie. Oh, excellent job, excellent job, excellent job. The new wheelchair oh, means buddy. Ronnie and Donnie can go out more easily. Today, they're visiting the National yeah, Museum of the U.S. Air Force. Guys, is it nice to be out and about? Yes. yes. Yeah, feels good in here, doesn't it? Yes. yes. Man toys. Because we're a man, we're a lady. Right, tell Hallelujah. Uh, Donnie and Ronnie, for the most part, do not have a pity party about their adversity. They were born that way. It's all they've ever known. They accept it for what it is, and they have an upbeat look on life, if you will. If you were able-bodied when and able to be drafted into the service, what branch would you go into and why? The Marines, because they're mean some of the guns. Do you have any regrets? Jesus born us this way, by God, we're happy the way we are. That's right. I could have been hurt in Vietnam. That's true, that's true. All right, here we go. Wherever they go, the twins' unique body draws attention. But what really makes Ronnie and Donnie so special is their age. I'm Donnie. Hi, Ronnie. At 58, they're already the oldest living conjoined twins. But their goal is to outlive Aang and Aang Bunker, the first conjoined twins to become internationally famous and who died aged 62 in 1874. 
But Ronnie and Donnie's goal of becoming the oldest conjoined twins in history was almost cut short a year ago when they contracted a deadly virus. We had a bad case of uh, flu, bad case of diarrhea. The phone was in the kitchen and we couldn't get up because our legs quit moving. We was weak as a kitten. Unable to get to the phone, the twins just had to hope help would arrive. A day later, neighbor and friend Scotty Grooms was passing by their house and sensed something was terribly wrong. I knocked on the door and I didn't get no response. So I got on my cell phone and I called Jimmy and I said, are the twins here? I said, you got them out? He's like, no, they should be there. I said, well, I'm standing at their front door, Jimmy, knocking on the door and I said, they're not responding and the door's locked. When I got there, they were on the bathroom floor and they were like, oh, brother, thank God you're here. We couldn't get to a phone. I mean, they were almost in tears. He was kind of scared how he was because he didn't know what to do. So he got the, the phone. Phone book? And, Kyle, and called the fire department. It took six guys to get us in the stretcher. On the way to the hospital, when they went down and they got real sick, he's in the car, and he's just bawling his eyes out. And I started crying because we thought we lost him. But the virus and dehydration weren't the only dangers facing the brothers. We quickly discovered that Ronnie had developed blood clots in both legs as well as his left arm. And in fact, the clots were spreading to the lungs and creating a life-threatening situation called pulmonary embolism. If it starts to spread, basically you cannot get oxygen in and eventually then the heart would stop. Only Ronnie had a pulmonary embolism, but because he and Donnie share the same blood supply, they also share each other's illnesses. While Ronnie was desperately ill, all Donnie could do was will his brother to survive. It was touch and go for a while there in that under Ronnie and Donnie's condition, it was determined it would not be safe to go in and do emergency surgery, to go in and try and remove the blood clot. It would probably be fatal. The twins spent three weeks in intensive care getting treated with blood thinners. Donnie had absolutely nothing wrong with him. He had to be still and quiet as possible while Ronnie was tended to, so. But he was scared. He cried a lot. I got emotional. Because of emotion said, Jesus, don't take him. I want to live. Throughout their lives, Ronnie and Donnie have always known that if one of them dies, the other cannot survive. Once one of the twins uh, would go, the other would go relatively slowly. That would take a matter of a day or even a week, depending on the circumstances, but total sedation to the point of not being conscious would be recommended, and that's what we would do. When you see Donnie crying and he's upset, and then, you know, usually when one starts crying, the other one starts crying, it, it breaks your heart. It, it does. It, it does really does. Heart. You see him in, in that condition, and you feel like, could I have done anything better? You know, he always questions, am I doing the right thing? And I keep telling him, honey, that the world's Otis can join twins. You're doing something right. The twins recovered in the hospital for three months. But when they finally got home, Jim knew they'd need round-the-clock care and a new place to live. But where would they go? I promised them many years ago that they would never, ever, ever have to live in an institution. Fifty-eight-year-old Ronnie and Donnie Gallion are the world's oldest conjoined twins. They love to play, and their friend Barbara Feldman and sister-in-law Mary Gallion are always happy to join in the fun. Hey, you got pretty shells. No, this is just not fair. You're the guest. She's related. Lord up. It's at times that Ronnie and Donnie uh, will appear as just wonderful, happy uh, pre-adolescent boys. I'll be the sniper. You'll be the machine gunner. However, we have to bear in mind that they did not gain the advantage of uh, having formal schooling. 
Schools were not equipped to handle a conjoined twins as to the disruption that that might have caused back in that era. Aim for uh, behind. Aim for what? Nothing. Aim talking. for what? What was that I heard? Aim for what? When they first went to school, they put us like in the corner because they didn't know what to do with us. They said it was a distraction to kids. And when I think about that, sometimes I get very emotional and cry like a baby. Donnie, Fred, cut, 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 brother. <laughs> okay, big Bertha. <laughs> In the many in-depth conversations that I've had, I, I do know that there is significant yeah. intelligence there, and they do keep abreast of what's happening in the world. So I think it is a combination of some Reload. developmental delays that did occur based on their condition, uh, as well as the the, uh, the the nurture aspect where they just were not afforded that opportunity that so many uh, children do get. Come on, we want to hit. Last one on the park. Their bodies may be fused at the abdomen, but the twins' personalities are quite distinct. Donnie takes a more serious look at life, and Ronnie's like, all your cares are blown in the wind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You know, we'll get to it tomorrow. Life is good. Praise the Lord! God bless America! <laughs> Got a hit, Big Ug. Ronnie and Donnie have lived independently for the last 20 years. But since they became seriously ill 12 months ago, they can no longer live on their own. The house that they're presently living in is a very tiny two-bedroom. Ronnie and Donnie refer to it as a, the little house or the cracker box. Ronnie and Donnie's house has never been modified to accommodate their unique bodies. Its narrow corridors and doorways means walking around or using their wheelchair is difficult. It met their needs for all those years, but they have grown larger. They've put on weight. They used to be sitting upright. Donnie has more regressed in that his back is getting weaker and weaker. He literally falls farther away from Ronnie over these years. There are times when Donnie's literally just smacked the side of his head on the doorway, just walking in simply to go to the bathroom or walking down the hallway. I mean, they literally rub their backs on this side and this side of the hallway walls. Life has changed um, uh, quite a bit uh, since they came home from the hospital. Um, uh, they do spend the majority of their time now in their uh, living room area, uh, in their current home. Before Ronnie and Donnie went into the hospital, they could get up, go into the kitchen, fix their dinner, do the laundry, take a shower on their own. At the point it came after the hospital stay, they couldn't get themselves up to go in to even just go to the bathroom without a huge struggle. That was when we looked into seeing if we could get some home health care. Okay, guys. Even with the caregivers, the twins' younger brother Jim and his wife Mary are still on call 24 hours a day. You pick up the phone if they call at 7 in the morning, if they call at noon, or if they call at midnight, which they do. <laughs> but overnight, the brothers are on their own. It's scary when the phone rings at night because, you know, you, both of us kind of jump up in bed and it's like, you're in a sleep and you're trying to get to the phone because you're, you know, you worry, you know, did they fall down? Uh, yeah, and whether it is or not, you don't know. I will see you both in the morning. Good night, guys. All right. Good night, Ronald. Good night, Donnie. Love you. Because of their brother's illness, Jim and Mary must find a better way to give them round-the-clock care without breaking their promise to keep them out of an assisted living facility. You know, we're doing an awful lot of running back and forth, taking care of Donnie and Ronnie, looking after everything. And Mary said, baby, it's time. Did you ever think about maybe it's time we move them in? Because, like, of our age, he, uh, he's sort of scared of our age, how we are. Like, we could fall down a so. Jimmy said, well, guys, you're not going to live by yourself anymore. They lit up. They were like, wow. And Ronnie was all over it, especially. He says, I'm ready, absolutely. <laughs> when? But there's a big problem with the twins moving in with Jim and Mary. 
Their home is too small, and what's more, they don't have the money to build an addition. We went in to see if we could get a loan if we qualified, and were turned down. A friend of ours got wind of this, and she said, if you don't mind, do, would you be offended if I got online and see if I can find someone in this country that would take on this project? Ronnie and Donnie's guardian angel is their friend Barbara Feldman. How are you? Fine. She made it her mission to find a charity that would build an addition to Jim and Mary's home so the family could live together under one roof. Got to get my hugs and kisses first. I just started and I got on the phone and when one person said no, I went to the next person and that's how I made a lot of the contacts. And one thing led to another and then here we are. Barbara's a very tenacious woman. She looked up different charities, different foundations for days and days and days until she found the Christian Youth Corps up in Machias, New York. The Christian Youth Corps swung into action. They hired an architect to draw up plans for an addition that will double the square footage of Jim and Mary's home. It will be custom built to suit Ronnie and Donnie's unique needs. Once this idea was proposed to the community, there were several that jumped on board immediately. They wanted very much to be a part of this project. Yeah, the whole community's been here. There's been a lot of volunteers, a lot of people donate, a lot of time. Uh, mainly, I know it's a lot of volunteer work, taking care of um, some guys who need it. So it's kind of nice to be a part of it. So <laughs> well, There's a lot to do and a uh, short time to get there. And we're all kind of staying out of each other's way and working together. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Jim and Mary hope that a new home for Ronnie and Donnie will give the brothers more freedom to enjoy life. Unlike their current home, the new addition will be 100% wheelchair accessible. We can get the wheelchair through any part of this house that we need to without a problem. Simple things like going to the shower or the bathroom and no doors to deal with. No doors to swing and hit them in the head or to be in the way to walk through a hall. The custom-built addition will include a combined living room and bedroom, plus a downstairs game room. The outside will be easier for the twins to access in their wheelchair. One of the things that we were mindful of early on is we didn't want to have an institutional building back here. We wanted something that would flow and be seamless with the existing home. It still meets the special medical needs that they have, but it still feels like a home and it's comfortable. And, and bright and airy, so we're thankful for that. Jim and Mary are counting on the construction being finished in five days, or else they're gonna hear about it. We told Donnie and Ronnie there's five days left, and they're pretty standard to the point of, you've told me five days, so we better be moving in five days, buddy. So there's a lot to get done. This is gonna be Donnie and Ronnie's dressing area. There's gonna be a sink right here with no vanity underneath of it so that their legs can roll right up underneath of it on the wheelchair. They got it set up where Donnie and Ronnie will each have their own shower head, have their own handhelds where they can, they can shower on their own instead of waiting and taking turns. And then out here, this is the biggest living room Don and Ronnie's ever going to have in their life. It's wonderful. they got all these windows that they can see out, and they've been built close to the floor purposefully so that from their angle sitting down low, they got a full view of the outside. Jim and Mary are concerned about the impact of construction delays, but the biggest challenge of all will be getting Ronnie and Donnie to downsize. Okay, is this something to finally part with? No, you nuts. Conjoined twins, Ronnie and Donnie Gallion, have spent the last 58 years joined at the abdomen. After 20 years of living alone, they're planning to move into a new addition at their brother Jim and his wife Mary's home. I'm really excited about moving because I'll be in my nice big house enjoying life. You go first, you're the oldest. You never let me forget that. Give me your shirt. That's because I was born head first. I know that. <laughs> Ronnie and Donnie like to dress identically. Most everything in their home comes in pairs. 
But although their possessions look similar, the twins know exactly whose is whose. My Lord has the E on it, and Donnie has the letter H. Here's the three strands, mine's the four strands. Mm. His is green, mine is brown. <laughs> With two of everything, their small house is crammed like Noah's Ark. Ronnie and Donnie's sister, Katie Johnson, is helping them pack. But trying to get her <laughs> brothers to part with anything I is know. a huge challenge. All right, I'm going to go through this, and you're going to tell me yes or no if we're going to keep it or if we're going to throw it away. OK, is this something to finally part with? No, you nuts. Binoculars? Keep. Okay, we have a red bat and a blue bat. We're gonna keep these? Yes. Okay. Best wishes, love, Miss September. See this? Oh, that's a keeper. <laughs> the brothers have large collections of toys. Cars. We've got about eight boxes of cars in here. And they're all going. Why are we keeping so much stuff? Aren't we gonna donate some of this? You're crazy. <laughs> they love their Hot Wheels and Matchbox, and that's fine, but you don't need all the extra dishes that you have collected over the years. We're not going to get rid of these? No! <laughs> get rid of them? Uh-uh, keep them. Oh, what is this with toothbrushes? Another toothbrush. Toothbrushes. They even stress out if you move things around the house to they, clean. I mean, Mary will go over there to clean at times, and they'll go, that's OK, sis. You don't have to touch that, because they're afraid she's going to take something throw it in the trash, <laughs> literally. And they do get upset over that sometimes. Oh, I just don't know how that got up there. Do you? We were supposed to throw this away, remember, because it was broken. Well, Is this something you guys head. got out of the trash? I didn't get out of the trash. Donnie's not answering me. I mean, we want to give them a total fresh beginning in this house, but they still want to bring everything with them. Even though this is a bigger house, we want to keep it uncluttered, open space where they do have room to breathe. That's a keeper. OK, so this is for fishing. But Ronnie and Donnie are winning right. the battle over their possessions. They're keeping much more than they're throwing away. OK. Hats and more hats. The okay. twins have lots of unusual costumes from the days when they were performing in fairgrounds in North and South America. Soon after news spread of Ronnie and Donnie's birth 58 years ago, their father Wesley and mother Eileen received offers to exhibit their conjoined twins as a sideshow attraction. They refused at first, but with nine children to support, the couple had few options but to take Ronnie and Donnie on the road starting at age seven. Over the next two decades, the twins worked in fairgrounds across America. But in the 1980s, their livelihood was suddenly jeopardized. Back then, they had a law, what's still on the books to this day, in the United States. States. You're not allowed to show people like what's in my dying's condition. Because back then there was do-gooders who made a law. Where no. people like us, born different, couldn't show their stuff. All right, let's see if this brings back some memories. No longer able to earn money in the U.S., Ronnie and Donnie started touring in Mexico working in a circus. Do you remember this? Oh, yes. Let me tell you had that one made for me, Ryan. This is the one I think I remember. That's cute. Yes. Do you remember this? Mm-hmm. In the circus. In Mexico. Oh, yes. And boy, is that too old. People's gut reaction, I think, when they hear that Ronnie and Donnie had toured in the carnival sideshows would be one of uh, negativity. But when you really look at the behind the scenes activities that went on with that and the relationships that were developed with the, with the carnival folks and, and to this day, it was a very positive thing. And um, really, they would not have been able to do any other type of meaningful work. They truly uh, were working. They were, we were earning income for their family that their family greatly appreciated. Ronnie and Donnie are still close friends with Juan Sengua, a magician who performed alongside them in Mexico for six years. A visit to the Cincinnati Zoo brings back old memories, especially the tiger exhibit. You want to see the cat? Yes, sir. It looks real hungry. <laughs> 
There was a chance for them to be magicians, not like, like in the fair, you know, just an exhibition or anything like that. It was a nice chance for them to be something. We made a girl disappear and then took the, the cameras off, a tiger appeared. But a fully grown tiger is not the easiest of showbiz partners to work with. They used to use a tiger a lot bigger than those two over there. Oh, yeah. A big tiger. But a tiger, if they really bite you, when they're angry, you're dead. All you need is just one crunch. There's one in here, one in here, one in here, one in here. And I was just playing. Yeah. They never trusted it. So as soon as they finished with the act, they wanted to run away from the cage. They never trust that tiger. So if you had a chance, would you do the tiger act and put your head in the tiger's mouth? Ain't that damn stupid? <laughs> Ronnie! <laughs> I said, we understand. No way friendship money. No period. But some risks are unavoidable. Just three days before move-in, a storm threatens to flood Ronnie and Donnie's new home. It's been a bad day. For 20 years, conjoined twins Ronnie and Donnie Gallion have looked after each other in their own home. But since a virus nearly took their lives, they need round-the-clock care. A move to a new addition in their brother Jim and sister-in-law Mary's home will make that possible. But just three days before move-in, rain brings construction to a halt. So all we need is a wet basement after they just drywall. That's just not good. It's been a bad day. Ronnie and Donnie may not be able to move in as planned. We can't get the place painted if the drywall's not dry, so this could delay things a couple, three days. It just depends on how things go. There is a serious risk of not making Friday. I mean, we still got to sand the floor in here. We got appliances coming tomorrow. Everything has to fall into place or it can be a real mess. It's been that kind of a day. <laughs> we have agreement with Jimmy that we don't buy that stuff. If, it, um, if it's thunder and lightning, that's a no-no. Because that's good for the health. Donnie and Ronnie do not really care to be alone, frankly. They, they have a fear at night, even a simple thing such as a thunderstorm. That bothers some people, but them, it really scares them. We're both scared of thunderstorms. You've got to say the other word we're also scared of. What? That's not a bad word. When there's fireworks, we're scared of those things. Uh, that's not what else I'm not trying to say. We're both scared of the dark. When we used to sleep in the bed, say last night it would be a bad storm, I hadn't seen Donnie to sleep. And then, or then Donnie would get in my hand. Brother, could you put my hand on me, brother? I'm scared of the weather. It's the day before the big move. The rain has cleared, and better yet, the basement didn't flood. But with a day of construction lost, there's a ton of work to be done before Ronnie and Donnie can move in. So it's all hands on deck to get their new home finished. We're counting every minute, that's for sure. And we're hoping to move them in Friday afternoon, but there's a lot of things that have to go right between now and then, so. Many locals from the small Ohio community have donated their time, skills, and materials to help build the addition. It's been pretty um, inspirational, really. There's been well over 100 volunteers uh, for manual labor, and there's obviously been a significant amount of vendors that have donated all sorts of materials from lumber to the furnace to the wiring and lighting and everything. You know, you just see the better side of humanity where people team together and they want to bless this family. And so it's been pretty special to be a part of it. The enormous effort to get back on track after the rain pays off. 
One of the final touches before move-in is the addition of new appliances. Is the water on here? Yes. Okay. This is really something. I knew that was going to be a tight fit. Trim. I'll take some of this counter off. Mm, let me go get John. I'm just going to leave it outside of the hole. That's all hooked up, ready to go. Okay. That'll squeeze in there. I do believe that'll squeeze in there. That um, go check on the dryer for me. See if it's still there. Scare me. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. She's in there. Have fridge, will travel. But Ronnie and Donnie are about to move to their new home faster than anyone expected. We have to evacuate. They're on the way. At 58, Ronnie and Donnie Gallion are the world's oldest conjoined twins. The day has come for them to move from their home of 20 years to a custom-built addition in their brother Jim and his wife Mary's home. To make sure they're healthy enough for the move, the twins get a checkup from their doctor, hey Warren Lundgren. How's it going? Fine. All right, time for checkup. Good to see you. Well, I, like, I like this new bed you got here. Isn't that great? Yes. You really get a lot of support out of that. I'm glad that you're wearing those support stockings. I think that's making so a big I, difference. How's your foot doing over there where you had the stress fracture? It's numb. Mm. Is it numb? Okay. Is it still hurt when you walk on it? Yes. Uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see once we get your shoes, which are yes. in the process of being made, if that'll help give it a little more support. Now, I'm really excited, you know, with your new situation of moving over yes. to Jim and Mary's that you guys are going to be able to get up and get a, uh, be a little more mobile because I think that'll help yes. a lot with your health situation. Yes. You'll have a lot more room. You won't have to struggle to get through narrow passageways. And no. th it'll take your head out of danger there quite a bit there, Donnie, so that's good. Well, there's going to be one thing on the no house. Mm -hmm. No doors on the bathroom. Uh-huh. That's right. The twins' younger brother, Jim, is optimistic that finally, everything is going according to plan. It's happening, everything's happening. We got the plumber doing final touches here. We got carpenters doing finish work. We got electricians putting the final lights and outlets in. It's happening, it's good stuff. Everything's on schedule, but across town, an unexplained smell of gas sends Ronnie and Donnie into a panic. Good brother, dear. Hello. Had to call the fire department, 911, to come in and check the house. Gotcha. We have to evacuate. Close friend Juan Sengua and home help Violet Bowermaster are on hand to help the brothers evacuate. Can you do that? Can you walk out? Can you put two chairs together so they can sit? Yeah. 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 yeah there's one right, room in the kitchen. We're supposed to be out here now. Listen, you can't get too excited. We're getting out, but you got to be doing it the safe way. I got you. Let's go. The smell of gas is making the twins feel nauseous. They must clear out of the house immediately. They're on the way. Come this way. That's the fire crew? What fire crew? Fire department. They didn't find us? Mm-hmm. Easy. We can always replace drinks. We can't replace you guys. Nope. Main plan right now. There you go. There you go. Sit down. Yes. yes. From the kitchen. From the kitchen, guys. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Talk about your house. Yeah, Jimmy's here. Everybody's here, honey. What are we going to do, okay. sis? What are we going to do? We're going to wait and see what's going here. We may have to get you over to the house or something, because you may not be able to stay here. If you want to take it out of the other house, I'm ready to book you. The fire crew can't find a gas leak. They think Ronnie and Donnie may have left the oven on overnight by accident. It's another sign that the twins should no longer live on their own. What do you think we should do? you think we should take them over and put them in the, in the air? house? I think it'd be a good idea to get them in there in the air. There's nothing to sit on over there but the floor, but boy, is it cool in there. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I think we should. 
There's no time for long goodbyes. Ronnie and Donnie are eager to see their brand new home for the first time. Goodbye, old house. Hello, new house. The world's oldest conjoined twins, Ronnie and Donnie Gallion, made an emergency exit from their old house and are about to arrive at their new home for the first time. Friends and family are on hand to welcome them. They're usually excited about getting in here. They have no clue what this is going to be like till they walk through that door, so it's going to be wonderful. Their new living space is custom built to fit their unique needs. They're going to see their house for the first time ever. Yes. Pretty cool. <laughs> Happy as a lark. Good, goodbye, old house. Hello. New no house. house. Woohoo! It's cool. Yes. This right will give on. everybody just a normal family life and just, you know, enjoy the small things that you take for granted. Check it out. This you're gonna see your new kitchen here. Do you see oh. your ice maker Look you here. wanted? Does it work? Yeah. Yes. See ya. Praise the Lord. Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm happy as new kid. <laughs> Okay, look at this whole room is your living room bedroom. Look at all the room you got in here. Isn't this awesome? Telephone. Look how wide the hallways they made for you. No bumping into the hallways anymore. Look at how big this shower is. Look at that. Oh, wash and dry, I love that. Yep, we'll get to that room next. Hello, you praise Lord. Cool crowd child. Hold Okay. Oh, uh, let's go this way, Donnie. Oh, thank you. Thank guys. Praise the Lord. I went to heaven. Oh, boy, am I happy. You're going to be happy here. Right? It's going to be the four musketeers. And this half, half, because we're going to have a good New Year's. And when it's New Year's, we're going to party hardy. Yes, we are. <laughs> As Ronnie and Donnie put it, we're the four musketeers. Well, that's a tight relationship. You, I love you. Ow! I love you. What? what a little what? closer. My, uh, mm. Oh, you too, kid. They are my family. You do it because you love them. I love you. I love you. Yeah. Bottom line, you do it because you care about them. Very much so. You gonna be happy living here with Mary and I? Well, I won't be scared anymore. Good. Happiness punch! <laughs> Keep your day job. Bigger bathroom, bigger shower space, and a bigger kitchen. And on that side, a bigger laundry room. And you can't beat that. There's one more special feature of Ronnie and Donnie's new home to try out. A tailor-made hoist and rail system, which can carry the twins from their bed to the bathroom and back. This is, uh, is set in place so that it can accommodate any stage of their life. You know, for times when they are more mobile or less mobile, this system can be used more passively to lift them or more actively where they can hopefully use their legs and move about inside of the, the harness. The hoist system means the twins will be able to get to the bathroom and back to their bed even when they're ill. You ready? I'm ready, fellas. Yep, going up. Yep. Holy mackerel, I'm flying. Oh, that's exercise that will go right there. Cool. That's that high enough? Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you guys want to go to your bed? Okay. And this? Pretty cool. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that's the main concern. I didn't think about that when we had that in. Now, on a second, my tail's filled. Like! Are there bottoms high enough off the rail? I hope so. No, I'm not clear, sir. We got about another inch. <laughs> That's it. You're hitting my wum wum. <laughs> I'm too young to get wounded. Legs are here, gonna turn you. Yep. Okay, race. Oh, out, doggies. Oh, goody, rotor rotor left me off the bed. Mm. Ah, ah. Am I down? <laughs> you are down. You're down, chicken little. Ah. Okay. What's this man? <laughs> That was good stuff. That was flat incredible. I mean, you're talking 420 pounds, and that thing lifted them and easily. 
rolled them from room to room like nothing. This is going to make life a lot easier for the aides taking care of them. Donnie and Ronnie can get to the bathroom or the shower at any time that they're sick without problem whatsoever. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing they've come up with here. Good stuff. I'm going to keep it out of the way of your TV. That's the most important thing, right? Yes. <laughs> It's the next day, and with the sunrise comes the first full day for Ronnie and Donnie to spend in their new home. Oh, Jimmy. I should find my new house. Like a baby. Try with your hand. I promised them many years ago that they would never, ever, ever have to live in an institution. I know she herself. This makes the family, I mean, the dust settles after this build, which it's starting to. The life will be a lot easier. They feel safe and secure now. They know that somebody's going to be here at all times with them. They know that uh, it's going to be a lot of home cooking. <laughs> they feel totally safe in that. Oh, like a good tree. The book hands them for the girls. Oh, let's go. Mm -hmm. We're going out tonight, right? Uh-huh. Love you. You too. It's remember like we used to have it. Mm -hmm. They are just so grateful, aren't they, yeah, honey? They just to have the room and... Right in the heart of Texas! One minute, Ronnie was singing in a shower. I'm as happy as a lark, and the next minute he was crying, both of them. I mean, just to be able to get in the shower that they fit into and... They were overjoyed. It was cute. It was, it was cute. You have a dream like this, and your dream will come true. Your dream about being there for come true. And Jim has one more surprise for his brothers. <laughs> He's downstairs, underneath us. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Play the drums? Yes. Wow, I didn't know that. If he's their baby brother, they are learn to deal with it. There's allowances. Okay. I'll say in a nutshell, we have the same mother, same father, and get away with it. If I wasn't for Mary and Jim, I'd be still in that shack. That's why I'm happy as a bird, flying in my little coop. The twins are going to the Man Cave, a guy's only basement where they can spend quality time with Jim. The last time we played this, you cheated. That was four years ago. So I don't want to walk around and go. Don't bring back memories. <laughs> Moving in with Jim and Mary will extend their lives health wise, number one and it will give them a much better quality to their lives because they are very family oriented and they love Jim and Mary very much. So they're, they're just so happy. This is called living, not a cage for a cage animal. <laughs> I truly feel that they are very happy and uh, their bond with themselves and, and, and their brother uh, is just something that uh, we should all marvel at. And everyone's hoping that their brand new home will help Ronnie and Donnie live beyond the age of 62 and achieve their dream of becoming the oldest conjoined twins in history. Happy as can be.